So, group three. Let's continue. All right. Group three. Group three, talking about abuse. Could be anything, but that's where we start. <laughs> three of swords, getting all the nice cards today. It's pain, grief, heartache. Ooh. The ties that bind. The ties that blind. That's what I always say. This is family. This is backstabbing. This is nah. This is just pain that ties you. Cause that's the bitch, right? Look at me, I'm in so much pain. Oh my God, look at my truth. Look, I'm being abused. Oh my God, that all the people around you have suffered the same. So, who is gonna help you out here? And the problem is not even that nobody wants to get out of the pain, it's just the perspective is so wrong. Your world. Mm. It's and this is a big part of it for for people who have been abused or have suffered any form of this this is how the world works everybody suffered this there's this feeling of yeah well i know right that the i know how painful the world can be so does everybody else uh, we've all gone through stuff we all have to move on we all have to carry on there's no point in crying about it. It feels like nobody really wants, nobody really cares. Mostly. Four of Wands. Uh, Four of Wands is normally like a um, celebration, right? Sharing. Sharing. So, all together here, I'm just getting the message. Um, um, sharing your pain, opening up, um, talking about your experience, um, helping each other by being open about it. And, and that's what I want, hope to do here as well, is sort of share, share a bit of my point of view um, or my experience, show my emotions, and hopefully that helps. <clears throat> Whoa, what is this? Oh, the star. The Stern. Wait, I'm gonna... The lights, the lights. See that? It's a weird car, right? But the... But she's, she's, she's half the cup, right? Okay, that's the big deal here. She's... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Mm. Oh my God, so good. What I just... Told you, right? It's like opening up, showing your emotions by sh by expressing yourself. You help other people, right? Which is base the base point of creativity, right? By um, is by you expressing yourself, you heal other people, um, and that's also the star in the um, Santa Muerte deck. She stands in the water, and out of the water, she stands firmly rooted in her emotions and her pain, and out of that, she creates something. This is the same. She she holds. This cup is being, this is sort of over pouring, being poured out of, over her, and she pours her cup out on the world. So, so she takes all that pain or takes all that hurt and or experience. She makes something else. It doesn't have to be pain. You don't have to have suffered to be creative or to be a star. That's a big deal your experience okay you can be the happiest person alive and have the most beautiful life and still be able to create beautiful 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 art out of that just by sharing that emotion and magnifying it okay if you have happiness if you're an artist please magnify that be a catalyst i challenge you any emotion it's your job to translate that in your own way and you know sort of be a magnifying glass for that um, and be a kaleidoscope with your 
you're your own special pretty little kaleidoscope. <clears throat> Star is reversed though, so mm -mm. So if we reverse that for a second, it's the opposite of what I just said. It's by by looking through other by looking to other people, by looking to art, to songs, to movies, to understand your own pain. See? And I think that's important here because that's what happened to me or that's how I got out of it or that's how I healed a lot of a, a big part or, or how I am still healing is by looking at other people by by most of a big part of the help that I received was by music and movies and philosophers YouTubers, spiritual people, anybody, by people creating something, looking at them, seeing what they made out of all that pain. That helped me. And actually what, what is most intriguing to me is it's sort of the, not like, okay, you could say somebody on YouTube talking about their depression or, or, or abuse could helps me of course of course or helps other people but it's more it's more beautiful than that it's even like people who wrote a song and even if it's just music let's say no words just by the music understanding their emotion by resonating with what they made you recognize the pain even though it's unspoken even though it's you don't know this person, you recognize the pain, you recognize the same bleeding that happens. And just by resonating with that, you recognize and you heal and you find a way out. It's like a little light, little light flickering in the darkness. So art is a way out. If you really don't have any clue how to heal or any clue how to figure it out or figure yourself out, art, create, play, listen, like just anything. Eh? I'm not like, don't be highbrow here. Don't be um, like culturally, whatever. No, just anything, even the Simpsons. Watch television, watch anything, any movie, no matter how silly. Monty Python is one of those beautiful things that has helped, I think, so many people just by their absurdity and uh, the nihilism in the humor. You recognize a sort of pain, you sort of recognize people you finally see other people who look at the world and realize oh my god this is just one big show and it's ridiculous can't you see that everything around you is complete like it's fake it's not real it's the ridiculousness of it all it's and i hope i'm explaining this a bit well but I, the point is by by humor Humor and beauty and any form of art, you will recognize yourself. And the point is also that one of the best things to heal and one of the best things you can do is to get creative. That's the thing that helped me out the most is get creative. The trick for me to creative therapy is, <clears throat> and this is, this is important, so, so pay attention, is you just go to the... To the, to the supermarket or to the arts and crafts shop and you buy some nice pens or colors or glitter anything that speaks to you right you walk in that store like you're a little kid and you say ooh and ah and i want this and that sticker looks really cool i don't care if the other 40 are bullshit i want that one sticker give me the sticker don't spend too much money here but like <laughs> Let your kid have some nice little glitter pens, right? You go home, sit down, and you just use the glitter pens or the stickers. 
and you see what what's up and you try some things and then you like you you put the sticker on a piece of paper and then you paint over the sticker with the glitter pens and then you paint over it with another glitter pen because you just want to see what the double combination gives you there's no point to it that's the big deal when you're doing creative therapy you sit down you start there's no point nothing has to come out of this it doesn't have to be beautiful you just want to see the nice little things do its thing so and then you do that and then you maybe make eight papers full of glitter pens and stickers and it's all ugly and you don't care because you're having fun while doing it and you will see that while you're doing it, it sort of is a very medita meditative experience. You sort of get relaxed. It's the exact same experience for me as like you are on the beach and you're collecting little stones or seashells. After 20 minutes of sort of just picking up little seashells and stones and looking at it, just deciding, ooh, pretty, or nee, yeah, no. Um, you know, that's the only thing you're going at, right? Like this inside feeling of ooh and ah and shiny that's the only thing that's the only thing you're going for um, and uh, that's that it really really makes you peaceful but back to being creative because the cool thing is let's say you make these these pages full of glitter 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 <coughs> or colors or or all these combinations or all the stickers just all just that's the nice thing right you go to the store you buy the stickers and just put them all on a piece of paper just boom no point to it. All wasted. Useless. But you have fun putting them on the piece of paper and like rubbing them and seeing them. <sighs> or just put them all over the room and see what's up. But then the cool thing happens. At the end of this, you will notice there's this beautiful serendipity that happens. You put all the pieces of, of, of all that you made on the floor and then you will see at intersections something nice happens. Suddenly you see like, oh, wow, like I didn't mean to, you didn't mean to like sort of go over the paper and write on the other piece of paper, but that created a really cool effect or a gradient or something extra that you didn't see. And that, and you see in the serendipity, you will find beautiful little pieces of you and of your emotion. And you will feel like you have like something beautiful came out of the chaos and of the blah expression of emotion the silver lining art is emotions you need to and if you need to listen to music you need to Watching the right movie is as powerful as 10 good therapy sessions. That's the truth. But you need to take it very seriously, okay? You need to really, really, really take emotion seriously. And as the most powerful drive, like the most powerful drive you have is you. Emotions, we are more emotions than we are our thoughts. We can debate long and hard about this, but it's just the truth, okay? So you can't hide from your emotions, you can't hide from your desires, you can hide from that deep dark feeling you get every night before you go to bed. And it's not just you, it's not just the way humanity is, it's not just the way the world works, it's not for everybody, It's you're not supposed to feel like that. Honor your emotions and everything that stirs it, you should run for. Okay, so if you have a song that makes you cry and you don't know what's up, run for that. That's not something that's, you shouldn't run away from that. You should run towards that. That is something that is waving a huge flag at you. Like, come on, I'm here. Help is here. Listen to me. Come to the shore. That's what that feeling is. So cry, feel it. Let it burn and uncover yourself. <clears throat> we have the Ace of Pentacles or the Ass, the Scheiben, Scheisen, Scheiben. 
Ace of Pentacles. And we have the, the Aeon Ooh. Judgment. Ohm. Yeah. Reversed. Okay, so after everything I just blabbered on about, let's see if there's something, if the cards want to talk about something else. Because I've not been listening. Let's see. So we got the star inside or the star reversed. Being kept in the dark, uh, or listening to art, creating, following you inside. Wait, wait, wait. Judgment. Pain. Pain. Judgment. No fairness. Heartache, trying to make money or a new idea. Um, okay, group, let me, group three, let me give me a second here to get my <clears throat> tuition going here. Hmm. Hmm. So, okay, just to add to that, there may be other <clears throat> stories here, but I'm going to continue on the one I had. But the, the message I'm getting here is let's, even if you're, um, even if you become Beyonce and write the most beautiful album on all of your heartache and how bad the abuse was and you you get Grammys and Oscars for the movies that were made from I mean like just ev like there are books written on how smart your music is and how well it portrays abuse and, and it even describes all the abuse you had you're not gonna get the judgment uh, don't expect people to understand don't expect your abuser or the family to just turn around and say oh my god you're right we're so sorry we caused you all this pain how you will not get that recognition in that way so you have to understand that you are healing. You will, you will use, you, you make, you create, you make your art or you tell your story, you write your book, you make your YouTube video to heal yourself. And so the way I see it is like, I hope I help a Jeff in like somewhere out there. Just if there is one that I can sort of even just feel for it like a minute, like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Or like, wow, I knew I, w I just like the way I felt, the way other people make, make me feel that I'm happy, that I don't really expect. I even, the opposite, when you make something out of your, like, you start telling your story, how bad it was, and you get recognition, expect a lot of bullshit and a lot of pain, like, not a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of people objecting to that, you're gonna get people fighting this, okay, so you're gonna have to fight for your judgment. And you have to keep true to yourself. You have to gonna just stay true and be your own star. Don't expect people to turn around and say, wow. Wow, oh my God, you're right, we're so sorry. Move on, move on. Don't keep waiting at that door. Don't keep waiting. Just don't do what I did and be depressed for 20 years. Because you hope that somebody will turn around and say, oh my God, we forgot you. And 
We're destroying you. How... Uh, how bad of us or something. <clears throat> Depression is sort of refusing to see that it's that there's no point. So there is no point to waiting for these other people. There's no point to waiting for your abuser to come back and say, Wow, let me try to repay what I what I took from you. It's just not gonna come. The judgment you you will get judgment. You will there will be balancing. There will be karma, but just not in that way. You have to let that go. You have to let go of that shore. Even how, how, how painful it is. You have to say... You have to say, I, like, I lost a part of me here. Damage has been done. But I need to let go. And you let go of that shore. I just I'm, can't say it any better. And then judgment can come in for you. Then, then balance can be restored and you can get what you deserve and you can be repaid. Just not from that source. It's just not gonna come from from there, okay? Try to see it as the... You're on an adventure in a land far away and you come across a big, big, nasty dragon and the dragon just sort of like, it attacks you and it really, it's a really tough battle. It's a really tough battle and this dragon really almost completely destroys you guys and and after the battle the beast is still raging you barely got out and you lost a, a hand and all your equipment two horses um your best sword all this you just you, you're broken down you're like barely getting by um there's no point in going back to that dragon and waiting for it to see how how stupid it is and and how hurtful it was to you like like you just, you're just not gonna get it so you the balance is gonna come from you moving forward and becoming stronger and learning all you can from that battle with that huge beast This this will give you beautiful things in the end, but you need to let go of that and become stronger. Move away from this dragon. <sighs> you understand. Balance. You will, there will be balance, there will be judgment. But you have to let the universe um, bring it to you in other ways. You have to expect... This energy will come to me, but just not from the same person or the same source. That's a hard lesson. That's the truth. <laughs> Group three. Auf Wiedersehen. I'm not German, by the way, so I'm Dutch. Um, tot ziens. Nobody knows what that is, so that's why German. Bleh. Group four. Hello. Group four. The last group. Five of swords. So, we're still in the land of mental uh, agony, of um, conflict, of, um, yeah, come on, like, breakup. It's a breakup. It's a worm being sliced into two. You get it. <clears throat> the second card, quickly, before we um, talk about this more. So, group four, last group. Um, let's see what this is about. I'm curious now, because I feel like I've talked. I've, bleh, I've, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I regurgitated a lot, or how do you say it? I, uh, I talked about a lot. And uh, so, we'll see what this is about. I'm happy we're at group four, and at the same time, I really want to yeah, I feel like I want to, to to do it this right, so I want to take my time. And like, I don't want to be happy suddenly because it's group four and we're almost at the end. I want to give you guys the same amount of drama and 
and um, and and crying of, like the other videos. To be fair, you know, like you deserve. You deserve your uh, your drama. Wow, <laughs> just blank. Like you, <laughs> I'm gonna give you drama, but not a lot of intelligent conversation. It seems. So here we go. Group four. Hello. Two of Swords reversed. With the, it's making a decision. To, the eclipse. It's reversed. So um, internal conflict. You could say X marks the spot. Truth, lying, lying to yourself, um, and then the queen of uh, of wands. Yes. Um, normally, let's see the queen of wands in the other decks. Yeah, normally she's a, she's a sort of uh, a Santa Muerte. She's seeing something, right? So she's like, uh, ooh, something passionate, something uh, something spicy is over there. But here she's protecting something. She's hiding the eggs. She's 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 um, hatching something. But sort of she's like, see, like she's a passion project. She's um, gonna give birth. Um, or she's fertile, or she's hiding, she's protecting something. Hmm. Give me a second here. I took out three guys, no, the other, the other decks got, got two, but I'm only gonna take out uh, one, two, three, four. Four baby cards. One, two, three, four. Also, oh, same as the other cards. Okay, I'm gonna take them out and then see what happens because I'm not speaking the truth. Cutting ties. Cutting ties. Ah. Okay. Four. Cutting ties. So. Overcoming abuse, overcoming these traumas means something you need to understand is when you are raised in an abusive environment or you, or you experience family trauma that these are patterns that don't just apply to you. They are, if you have an abusive parent, they were abused. It's a generation, like it's past... It's passed on, <coughs> and and often it swings like a pendulum, like like a, 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 um, a dynamic that that was close to my heart is narcissism, sort of narcissist narcissism or or um, um, an, an emotional um, coldness to bipolar uh, over emotional. Uh, or just both not in control or like like not in control of these emotional aspects or suffering from sort of or like trying to cope because that's what it is it's coping mechanisms like pff, let's forget all diagnosis right let's let's forget all everything the books wrote because it's just a name and they'd have no idea now they're calling it this next year they'll call it a different thing hello psychiatrists tell me if it's different uh Let's just say these are different coping mechanisms. And one generation, you can say we have this bipolar parent that just goes from, from, from these manic states to try to fix everything and everything is so cool and oh my God, life is amazing and we're gonna go for it to being completely depressed. Like nothing is going the way I wanted it to. Like, why is this so hard on me? I can't even take care of my children. I just feel empty inside to just swinging about. And then this parent may have these children that just, hate any of these emotions any other people with emotions they see as an attack because they're like oh no like if anything i've learned from my parent is that you don't want to you don't want any you don't want to that anybody else suffers 
the way you have so you don't want to you want to spare everybody else for your emotions or something like this and in this dynamic you become kind of hard and closed off and completely you see every emotion or every anger or overly emotional state as aggressive or an attack or as damaging because you saw your parents just ruin your life and ruin his own life with these because it's always being like the emotions are always in charge so so you have these manic parents that just destroy their lives financially and and make very like embarrassing situations for children um to then and then their children are become parents that just uh, become emotionally completely unavailable. And then those parents get children that become emotionally so starved and so lonely that they explode and have manic states, right? And what do we do to manic states? We give lithium. There, problem solved, right? Oh. Now he's depressed and now he's addicted. Now, now, that's not good. He's, ugh, ugh. Really, psychiatrist, call me if I'm wrong. Come on. Five of Pentacles. Another ass here, the Ace of Cups. Ah, Two of Swords. Again, but upright. Interesting. Reverse, upright, reverse, upright. Interesting. Eight of Swords. Opposition. Ha! Huh. Opposition. This is opposition. This big ass bitch hiding these eggs. What? What's she hiding them for? What's her problem? Then we get. This is interesting, right? We get. Like, my lazy part of me wants to just put this sort of reverse, like, oh, we got both the same cards, You're just confirming what I just said, so I don't have to go over it again. No, we're not lazy here, but we are tired, so. <laughs> we have the two of swords, but then upright, and let's see what is the difference here in these cards. We have an eclipse here, that's interesting, and we have a moon here. So that could be saying the same thing, because the sun is down, so the moon is up, right? But interesting here is we have we have this cup and we have also oh we have this oh and then this thing rang okay. so we just pulled this cup and we have this cup here again that's really cool ace of cups Wow, and I'm completely blanking here. So we were talking about cutting ties and the truth. Okay, that you have to cut your ties to... Um, you want to become happy. And you can't be... Okay. God. See, the problem is this. What's the problem, right? Okay, my parents are bad. They abuse me. I see that. They don't understand themselves. It's hard for them to see. They have their own traumas. I understand that. I understand that they're not gonna make, like, it's not... They may be at blame, but it's my responsibility to be better, right? So, I want to be happy. I understand that I can keep blaming other people for my own happiness. I have to work at it myself, right? Right! Everybody agrees. It's your own responsibility to be happy, okay? Well, the problem is that if you grow up in an abusive environment, you the world matches that. And you grow up in a world where you can't be happy and there's you can be happy in that world okay in your situation where you grew up your happiness was in conflict with other people's happiness so you speaking the truth to become happy makes other people unhappy so that makes a dilemma right so 
how do you become happy without hurting people around you and without damaging them? How do you choose? Because it's not a fair conversation you're having. It's not that we're all sitting around the table and we're like we're sitting together with your abusers or the situation you're in or the conflict you have and you're saying, well, oh, there's a situation I like, I want to be happy, but that's sort of like, that will make it uncomfortable for you. So like, if you want to be like, we have to choose who's going to be happy. No, you're not even having that conversation because the other person is blinded, right? They don't, they don't realize, right? So, and they don't want to realize they have this resistance. They don't want to see, they don't want to see the story. They don't want to see that you're still struggling and unhappy. So you can't even sort of, Ask them. They don't want to see. What do you do? And the problem is, you can't build a life. Your, your health and your wealth, your money, and you look, you rest, you being healthy your immune system not acting up okay let's be serious because if you've been abused and in the situations you will have autoimmune bullshit happening you will have a fever and all these kinds of weird crap happening that medical science just can't explain Ugh, another thing it's because you are battling yourself okay you are st you st because this outside part of you that you are still allowing your abuser in your world that means that inside your world this part of you is still going on so you're still having this part inside of you that it's fighting you that's an autoimmune problem okay you are regarding yourself as bad you are in conflict with yourself you want to do this with yourself you want to be this worm you're trying to break yourself in two The biggest realization in my world was when I realized I can't, for like I, in my dad's world, I can't win. I can't keep your truth and keep my truth too. It's impossible. I tried for all my life. It had took me 30, until I was 32 to, to like, even then I didn't want to confront anybody. I didn't want any bullshit. I didn't want any drama. I didn't want any discussion. I just wanted to be happy. And then it took the end of my rope, the end of everything, the end of my health backed up against the wall to realize like I can't I can't keep you in my world and keep my world. I can't exist and win when in your truth. It's just not possible guys. So you don't want to hurt anybody, but they are opposing you being happy. They are opposing you being healthy. So this opposition is unavoidable, okay? So if you go for your own happiness and other people seem to oppose that, or it seems to lead to you having to hurt other people and then people are blaming you for like, why are you causing this drama? Why are you making it so difficult? Well, then, guys then they're still abusing you. If you trying to be happy makes other people upset, then they're your abuser. It's so, that's how simple it is. They're not a bad person, they don't mean to, but if they're abusing you, you need to fight and you need, then they need to be shook, okay? And that's, a, that's difficult. <sighs> it's difficult. This is the essence here. Look. You have to choose. Don't. It's not up to anybody else, okay? If people are saying like, hey, this is blah, blah, blah for me, you need to choose. Okay? Choose yourself. Choose yourself. Really. If people are making you choose between you being happy or them, choose yourself. And that's not a selfish, just, you don't mean to hurt them. You don't make them mean to make them unhappy. But if it's choosing between either one of you being happy, then that's not a, then you're in a bad relationship. Cut these ties. Okay. And that's going to be difficult. 
and it's a very lonely process and cutting family ties like this, cutting abusive ties that have been going on for a long time, that means that that other ties will have to be cut as well. These patterns exist around you. If cutting your ties with your dad or your mom means cutting your ties with friends around you, with your work, with your roommates, with yourself, it's a very difficult process and it's like dominoes. And, but they all need to be cut, okay? That's the, sh that's the shitty part here. Because for once and for all, your happiness is important and it gets results don't let anybody else get in the way of your happiness ever again and you need to fight and that's hard and you don't need to do that alone so get help don't do rational don't make hasty decisions don't make impulsive decisions but stand up for yourself and that starts inside yourself, okay? That doesn't start with fighting or yelling at anybody. That starts by deciding in your head, I choose myself. And that's the truth for me. And that's where we start. And that's a difficult mountain to climb. But you don't have to do that alone. Even in yourself, ask yourself for help. Ask God, ask anybody, you will get help. If you decide you want to be happy, the sea, the sea parts, okay? That's how the world works. If you say, I want to be happy, I want to get out of this, the world shows you the way. But don't start by, I want to fight, or I want to hurt these other people. I want to pay revenge, because then you will hurt yourself in the end. Those parts exist inside you. Those abusive relationships, those dynamics are living inside yourself. Okay, so you need to heal from the inside out. But at the same time, you can't keep... You can't keep these, these ties going in the world when you know they're, they're not good for you, okay? Because then you are just hurting yourself in the end. You are abandoning yourself. It's so, so difficult, guys. So really, really, really. Step one is just like protecting yourself and saying, I want to make myself happy. I'm going to be, I'm going to find a way and then find help. Anybody, okay? Just start anybody. Anywhere. Just start anywhere. Even if the first two or three therapists or places you go to just don't really help you or blah, blah, blah. It, these are steps, okay? Just keep thinking. Stay sharp for yourself. Keep asking yourself the questions. Keep digging. Keep puzzling. Don't let anybody say what is up. Don't let any psychiatrist, any therapist give you a diagnosis and shut the books, okay? No, that's not how it works. Let them tell you you're depressed. Let them tell you you're this. Let them try to help you. But for yourself, the puzzle is way bigger. And you're the only person that can put it together. And you're the only person that will ever see the truth and, and can acknowledge it. So... Don't expect anybody else outside in the world to come tell you like, wow, this is the truth. This is what happened to you. This is, this is the only way to look at it because it will never happen. So you're the only, the only person that needs to just fight for it is you. And if you say this is my truth, then people will acknowledge it. And if your truth is I've been abused and... people who are supposed to love me are hurting me, then that is the case. And you wouldn't say those words if they weren't true. Think about that. If there were no basis for saying those words, you wouldn't even dream about saying those words. You're not trying to hurt anybody. You are trying to get better. So go do that. I hope this helps. Good night, everybody.